here. I'm here for another episode of the Speakeasy Podcast, where we talk about the behind the scenes of what it is to be the speaker or the author. I am so super excited to be here with you guys and to talk to you guys. This week, we were actually celebrating um, what would have been uh, Dr. Maya Angelou's 90th birthday. And many of you that have followed me for any length of time, you know that that was one of the people that I said, I wish I would have met um, before she went on to be to glory, but I did not get the opportunity. But thinking of, you know, meeting her then and meeting her now would have been definitely a different scenario because meeting her then I probably wouldn't have said anything. I just probably would have stared at her, but, <laughs> but meeting her now, I would have had so many questions and I would have wanted to just sit at her feet and learn so many different things. But yeah, meeting her then it might not have, like, I might've just looked like a creepy person just standing there breathing. But with that being said, guys, how many of you have read any of her autobiographies, have read any of her poetry? I know that we used to read it in school. We know that today's schools, they do their own things, so we don't know what might be going on there. But with that being said, you know, there's still the lessons that were taught by Dr. Maya Angelou during her time of writing, activism. She did poetry. She was a director, a producer. She was a dancer. I mean, there were so many things that literally fell into, you know, who was Dr. Maya Angelou. With that being said, uh, if you don't know who I am, I am Alta B. Spelzer, the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, and Amazon best-selling author. And I come to you with the Speak Easy podcast, and we talk about that author and speaker journey. I'm excited to have you guys here. And so each and every one of you that comes in, thank you so much for sharing out the broadcast. It is greatly appreciated as we move into this next next season. You guys know that it is April and we are about to rebrand the whole podcast. There are so many amazing things that are going to be coming down the pipeline, including, including some, uh, yeah, some sponsors. You guys are going to hear some sponsorship information coming out really soon. And as always, if you're interested in being a guest, bit.ly forward slash the easy podcast in order for you to register and pick a date that works best for you. So with that being said, let's get into today's topic, guys. I am so like big kid candy store excited about talking about this topic simply because of the lessons that she taught, simply because of the things that I've learned along the way with being a speaker and author and, you know, we're going to talk about a couple different aspects of it that you probably haven't really talked about before. First and foremost, of course, Dr. Maya Angelou was born uh, Marguerite Annie Johnson in St. Louis, Missouri in 1928. And she passed away in North Carolina in 2014. So it's only been, only been four years um, since she passed away. But like I said, her legacy definitely lives on. And those who are authors and speakers, you definitely can relate in saying that her legacy is the type of legacy that you want to leave for your children and your children's children. You can definitely relate and say that her legacy when it comes to her books and the topics that she discussed and the things that she fought for, the things that she stood for, literally left a legacy that will forever reign in our ears. I don't think any generation will come up not knowing who Dr. Maya Angelou is. Now, she was an educator. She was an actress. She was an author. She was a poet, a producer, a director, a historian, and a playwright, guys. She was a jack of all trades, right? But it all, all, all centered around her being a lover of words and the power 
of her voice and the power of the words that she chose to use. She was somebody who definitely not under not only understood it, but she appreciated it. And so, oh, hey guys, thank you for coming in. Yes. Um, and so someone just came into the broadcast and said her favorite quote is, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. Oh, I love it. Yes, and a philanthropist. Um, my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes, because there's a ton, right? One of my favorite quotes is, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. And so I'll repeat that. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. And I think as, as entrepreneurs, as authors, as speakers, we go through this journey, right? And things happen. Life happens. It's, it's unexpected. You know, circumstances come about and kind of knock, knock the wind out of us sometimes. Yes, you may encounter defeats but you must not be defeated. And I've always been one to say that, you know, failure is an option. It's just not the first option. And, you know, all, everybody's always, you know, failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. So then somebody who fails feels as though they can't get restarted. They feel as though they can't go on or can't press past that moment of failure. No, failure is an option because it's an option for me to either learn or quit. And I have to make that decision. No one can make that decision for me. I have to make that decision myself. So am I going to quit or am I going to push past and learn from this experience? So again, I'll say the quote one more time from, doc, from Dr. Maya Angelou is you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. And so with everything that I've gone through in my journey, I've really found that not being defeated is hard work, but it's so worth it. It's hard work, but it's so worth it. I have literally been able to impact and empower so many different women because I chose not to be defeated. I may have had some defeats, but I chose not to be defeated. And by doing that, it's almost like the whole candle, the lit candle. When you decide that you're not going to be defeated, you're a lit candle. And every person that you come in contact with, you light a flame for them. Now, some it's going to be harder to light that flame for them. When the flame lights, they may not even be in your presence any longer. But you light a flame for each and every person you come in contact with when you choose not to be defeated. So I definitely appreciate and applaud that message from her. And like I said, that's who she was. But now, this is the thing. Let's be honest, you know, I'm hashtag real talk. In the, in the media, they were discussing why, you know, nobody wanted to talk about the other side of things that she, was, she had done. You know, she, she, did, she did the opera. She was a nightclub dancer, a stripper, nightclub dancer. Uh, she was a sex worker. She was a fry cook. Nobody wants to discuss those pieces. And I, I, it's interesting because I know Dr. Maya Angelou herself would discuss them. But a lot of times when we see somebody, we only want to see the positive. Let's be honest, correct? We want to see the positive. We want to see the things that they overcame. We want to see, you know, them being this magnificent person. But we have to understand that everybody has a journey. And where that journey started is not always going to be in a, a mansion with a silver spoon in your mouth. Everybody has a journey and where that journey started is not always going to be riding around in a Benz or a Ferrari. Where that journey started could be at the lowest of low points, but the reality is, is if she made it from where she was, being a fry cook, being a sex worker, being a, a nightclub dancer, to being one of the most well-respected women of all time one of the most well-respected women of all time. That's saying a lot. It is. That's saying a whole lot. Because that says to me that no matter what it is I go through, I can still make it to that same level. No matter what it is that my past looked like. Come on, we, we can go a little deep today. No matter what your past looked like, you have the opportunity to be able to push, like Medora said, push, 
until you get to that same level or whatever success looks like for you. You have the opportunity to push until you get to your level of success. So with that being said, yes, Dr. Maya Angelou went through those things when she was younger. Yes, those are the things that she did. Did she stay there? No. And see, that's the key element. Did she stay there? No. She chose to look at it as a defeat at times or things that she used to learn in her, you know, in her journey, but she did not allow herself to be defeated and to stay where she was. So that's a great message for you guys to understand. The second piece was that she worked with both Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Wait, 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 listen up. She worked with both Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Why is that so significant? Because when you are someone who is a supporter, when you're an encourager, when you're somebody who is always uplifting people, you will be put into the place, into the, the, the circle of many different people all over. And where some people would see a difference between the two and they would say, well, how was she able to work with this one? And they don't believe the same thing and they were doing, no, no, no. It's about the message. It's about the mission. And so her being able to work with both Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. says a lot. It says a lot for us as women because we can support, we can uplift, we can encourage, and there not be a scandal. There we can uplift, encourage, and support, and there not be uh, you know, any side reasons why we're trying to help or uplift. There, it says so much, and these are the things, again, that people don't talk about. These are the things, the topics, when it comes to Dr. Maya Angelou that people don't discuss. So you know that meant that me being the unicorn, I had to discuss them. But like I said, when we think about her journey, when we think about her process and the things she's gone through, you have to sit back and say, wow, what a life. What a legacy she's left behind. What a support system she has been to so many people. Her words gave life. Her words impacted the world. I know a lot of you saw when she did the inauguration for, you know, for Bill Clinton. And we were just like, we were like in awe. Everybody knew who, who <laughs> Dr. Maya Angelou was then, right? But for those who had been following before that point, man, it was amazing to see all the things she had done. I know that when I first started thinking about writing in middle school, my grandmother, that was the person that she told me to go and to look up, was Dr. Maya Angelou. That was the person. And this is back in 19... So... <laughs> that was back in 19... So imagine how much of her journey I had already... You know, I, I got to see how much of her journey. And so that was one of the things that always kind of like bothered me because I never got the opportunity to meet her. But again, meeting her then and meeting her now would have been two different, completely different experiences because now I would have literally like wanted to sit at her feet and write down everything she says to me, record it, listen, put it on CD, DVD, everything, guys. It would have been phenomenal. But, you know, we look at the journey and we oftentimes will look at her and say, wow, she's so amazing. Wow, she did so many things. We forget that we had the same thing on the inside. The same way that she said that we would have defeats, but you must not be defeated, is she was talking to each and every one of you. No matter where you are, no matter what has come about in your life this year, last year, years before, no matter what it is, by all means, literally, you may have some defeat, but you do not need to be defeated. Don't think of yourself as being defeated. 
that's something definitely for you to take with you in this journey. Now, this is the other piece that the people don't talk about when we're talking about Dr. Maya Angelou. And for those who are just coming in, thank you so much for joining the conversation. If you have any things to add to the conversation, by all means, put it in the comments. Even if you're catching this via replay, I always come back and engage with you guys. Hit the follow button so that way you can connect with me. And don't forget to share out the broadcast because someone else may want to hear this particular episode. Now, this is the thing. In the 90s, now y'all know, let's be honest. Okay, the 90s is when I told you that I heard about her, right? The 90s in the 90s. The 1990s in the 90s. <laughs> but literally, in the 90s, she made 80 appearances a year. Wait. Let me, let me roll that back. Let me bring it back for you. 80 appearances a year just for lectures. Just for lectures, that's saying a lot. I'm gonna tell you why. So we know about the 10,000 hour rule. The 10,000 hour rule is that if you wanna become the expert in something, you spend 10,000 hours doing that thing. People have become lazy. I, I know that's an ouch, that's an ouch. Hashtag real talk, I apologize, it's an ouch. Actually, I don't even apologize, that's a sorry not sorry moment. Oftentimes, we've gotten to the point where we want everything to be instant. We want instant success. We want instant um, popularity. We want instant followers. We want instant clients. We want instant money. We want instant everything. But the reality is, is we can't get instant anything. There's no reason for us to get no. We have to work towards what it is that we want to achieve. And so one of the things that she wanted to do was she wanted to educate people. She wanted to uplift and encourage, like I said, and educate people. So 80 lectures a year. That doesn't include book signings. That doesn't include poetry readings. That doesn't include, no, this is just lectures, guy. Lectures. That's it. Lectures. 80 lectures a year. Now, for some of you, you may say, oh, well, you know, it, you know, she had help and da, da, da. But we're talking about in the 1990s. We're not talking about in the 2000s. We're talking about in the 1990s. So we remember, what, we know what the cell phones look like now. But in the 90s, did we have cell phones, people? We did not. We had pay phones and beepers. That was what, about 90-ish? <laughs> that was what, late 90s? Beepers. So could you imagine doing events and trying to get to places and beeping and then calling somebody on the house phone? Yeah, they had house phones then, y'all. So we got to understand when we look at it, the projection of this and we look at this thing as a whole, 1990s, we didn't have cell phones. You couldn't go and Google uh, information for, you know, who do I speak to at Harvard University for me to be a speaker or lecturer? You had to call people. So there was a lot of legwork that had to be done. Yes, you had to call the school and find out, or you had to go and find a directory and find, or, or, dare I say it? Oh, we had to use a phone book. <gasps> Oh my goodness, a phone book. Guys, if the kids had to use phone books today, they would lose their darn minds. <laughs> they would lose their rabbit minds. I promise you, they would go crazy. They would say, why is there 90,000 people with the same freaking name? Why is that happening? You want me to look up somebody's phone number and 20 people all got the name Robert Harrison. <laughs> and they all in the same city. Listen, yes. Imagine going through a newspaper to find speaking events and going to the library and to look up stuff. Imagine it. And in the 90s, we still had that. We still had dial up. Guys, 
This was not an easy task. So right now you have it so much easier than what she had it. Hey, Lottie Dottie. Hey, guys. Thank you for coming in. Yes, you had it. You have it so much easier. So imagine using a phone book, using a newspaper, uh, reaching out to people, actually having to call people to say, hey, I would like to be a speaker for your event. Um, where people actually opened up their emails. Yeah, that part. Where people had AOL emails. Woo. So we got to think. For her to do 80 appearances a year lecturing, that's just lecturing. Again, that's not poetry reading, book signings, or anything else. For her doing 80 appearances a year just for lecturing, how quickly do you think she made it to 10,000 hours? How quickly, how quickly? Because you think a lecture is going to be anywhere from an hour to about three hours. Give or take, because there I've seen lectures go on for five hours. I was not in them, I, I've seen them. <laughs> I was not in them, I've seen them go on for five hours. So anywhere from one to five hours, 80 times, I'll do the math. I got you. Hold, please. Hold, please. I'll do the math for you. If we got 80, and we'll say, we'll do an average of three hours. Okay. That's 240 hours from them 80 appearances. Now, some of you want to call yourself an expert and you've done two shows in one year. Okay. <laughs> now, granted, again, we have it, I'll say it again, for those of you that do not know, we have it so much easier. Why? Because we have live streaming. So live streaming cuts that time it, uh, so far down. Because if you go live five times a week, two times a day, that's 10 hours right there. That doesn't include your live events. That doesn't include telesummits, uh, interviews. That doesn't include any of those things. So live streaming has definitely impacted what it is that an author or speaker can do. But imagine Dr. Maya Angelou going and traveling to 80 different places for lectures a year. So we look at her journey. We look at what it is that she was able to accomplish. We look at all that she was able to do. And then we say, okay, I want to get to that point. I want to get to that place. So what are you willing to do? I know. It's not an easy question to answer. Why is it not an easy question to answer? Because who wants to do all that work? <laughs> no, when you truly love what you do, it's not work. I've found that out because I love what I do. When it comes to podcasting, I love what I do. When it comes to speaking, um, even though I'm an introvert, I love speaking. I love what I do. Uh, so you know, I'm willing to do it. And this year, this year, I'm not, I haven't made it to her 80 locations for this year, but this year I am already signed up for 45 locations where I will be speaking this year. 45. Because I'm willing to put in the work. I, I put together my own six city tour. I'm a part of a 32 city tour. And then I have speaking events coming and going left and right. Literally, I just had to turn it one down because of the, the date and the location and it conflicted with another event. I never knew that I would get to this point of having to turn down events. What? But I know that last year, last year my goal was that I was going to do two uh, podcast or radio interviews a month. And I said, okay, 
that means I'm going to have to get out here and I might get some questions that get asked that I don't really like, or I might get some questions that get asked that throw me off, but that's all right. I'm going to go full force. And last year, I averaged about two to three interviews a month. But I had to go find the interviewers. I had to be willing to do the work to sign up. I had to show up. And then I had to be willing to share that information out. For those of you that have been following, you know that I share out um, You'll see flyers for me doing events. You'll see uh, me sharing out the replays from different interviews I've done. If you go on iTunes or Spreaker and put in my name, Altavis Pelzer, a ton of different ones will come up. Some are on YouTube. Some are on, I mean, there's like all across the board on so many different platforms because I went and I put myself out there. I went and I did the work. I went and I said that if, I, if I'm saying that I'm going to be a professional speaker, then I need to have my voice heard by any means necessary. So that meant that I had to go live and, and, and practice speaking to you guys, even when my kids set off the smoke alarms and even when I was nervous in the beginning and was swaying back and forth because of my nerves and not wanting to look at the camera. Guys, I had to be willing to put in the work. Willing to put in the work. Oh, and Sissy said, oh my goodness, old school was built on hustle. Y'all better say that again. Old school was built on the hustle. I know we hear, you know, Gary V really push it out there. Hustle, hustle, hustle. It's all about the hustle, baby. It's all about the hustle. But the reality is, is it was. It was about the hustle. They literally had to put their foot <laughs> to the ground and really get some things done. So then we have to sit back and say, and write it down and say, what's going to be my goal for this year? I know right now we're like, we just hit second quarter for 2018. So we, we're looking at first quarter. What did we do? How did we do? Did we do any events? Did we make any sales? Did we make any money first quarter? Um, did we hit our mark? Uh, this year, I literally put myself at a goal of making six figures for this year. So that meant that I had to do extra things in order to make those six figures. That meant that I had to put myself in position of where my clients would be. That meant that I had to be unafraid to ask for the sale. That meant that I had to literally scale up my prices. And I couldn't be ashamed to charge my worth. I'm sure that my Dr. Maya Angelou in the beginning would go to places for free. I'm sure that she would go and she would speak for free. I'm sure that even closer to the end, she would still speak for free. But guess what? People knew who she was because she was willing to do the work. They knew exact, They knew her name. They knew her legacy. They knew her books because she was willing to do the work. And it's so interesting because... I said, okay, I got to be willing to do the work. I know it gets difficult. Life happens. Let's be honest. Life happens. I am a single mom of four teenagers. If you think that being a single mom of four teenagers is at any point easy, by all means, I'll switch and let you come take care of them for a week. <laughs> I'll let you take care of them for a week. And then we'll have this discussion about trying to build not one, but two businesses while being a single mother. There is a lot going on, guys. But I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And that goes back to the quote that we said at the beginning from Dr. Maya Angelou. You may experience many defeats but you must not be defeated. Do I get it all right? 
not by any means. Trust me. I've had a whole week of tech issues. A whole week. One day it just kept picking me out. The next day we had issues with the wind and knocking out the electricity. And I mean, oh, so many issues. But the reality is, is that if I'm going to be at the level that I see myself getting to, I got to be willing to put in the work. How many of you are willing to put in the work? Put that in the comments. Even if you're catching this via replay, put that in the comments. I'm willing to put in the work. Now, if you're catching this, of course, on the podcast, uh, on iTunes or Spreaker, yeah. Spreaker, you can do comments. iTunes, I don't believe you can. (laughs) You can leave a review on iTunes. That would be appreciated. Or a review on Spreaker. But I want to hear you say it. I want you to hear yourself say it. When we think about, I know why the cage bird sings, we got to think, guess what? I may not be where I want to be, but I'm somewhere. So that means opportunities, possibilities. It's all open right now may not be where I want to be, but I'm somewhere. I'm somewhere right now. I may not be at the level I want to be at, but I'm somewhere right now. And if I'm somewhere right now, that means that I have what it takes to get to where I want to be. So many people forget that. They get so tangled up in where they are. They get so tangled up in what's going on right here, right now. They won't push. They won't push. That's right. I am willing to put the work in. I'm willing to put the work in. That means networking. That means uh, speaking up when I would normally be quiet. That means doing telesummits and all types of events. That means doing back-to-back events when it comes to uh, this month included. Back-to-back events, back-to-back weekends, but I'm doing it with a purpose in mind. I'm doing it because I know that success is coming. Success is coming. For those of you that do not know, I'm literally putting together my first, my first, my first live tour. Is it scary? Yes. But am I willing to put in the work? Yes. So many times I've seen people put together events and the event was more for financial gain than anything else. And they really didn't care about the people that were coming. They didn't care about the people that were speaking. It was just kind of get paid and go. And, you know, I said that this event, everything that I do, those who have been following, everything that I do is different. I don't fit into the bubble, sorry. (laughs) But with that being said, I know that not only is it different, but it's needed. And so literally the Love My Voice Tour is two powerhouse speakers. So you're not going to another tour, another event where you're going to have 3,000 speakers and you don't know what none of them are talking about, uh, where you're not getting action steps when you leave. Um, And where you don't really engage and meet anybody new in the room. There's so many events like that already. We didn't need another one like that. So the Love My Voice Tour is literally a six-city tour. The kickoff is April 14th. And if you would like to come to the live event, it's bit.ly forward slash love my voice now. If you are unable to come live, you can still get a virtual ticket. And the virtual ticket uh, literally gives you some bonuses with it. As a virtual attendee, you not only get to see one, but all six cities when you get your virtual ticket. Then on top of that, you also get invited to a live virtual networking meetup where you get to interact and engage with others in the community. Sounds like a win-win to me, right? That part. And so those who are um, 
Love My Voice tour attendees, all of you get that access to the live um, virtual networking meetup because it's necessary, it's needed. Connection is, is definitely something that's needed in this next season. But not only that, but those who will be there live, again, there will be the two powerhouse speakers and an adult and a young adult and teen panel. Those of you who have followed me for a while know that I am all about empowering our youth and giving them a voice. Everything that is attached to me is about giving somebody a voice, giving them a voice so they can be heard. And so I have four amazing young ladies who will be on the panel giving you life on this panel. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. You can get your virtual ticket at the same location, bit.ly forward slash love my voice now. And I, I said that this had to be different. So I didn't want to be in an expensive hotel, I, you know, in a hotel room. I, I wanted to be in a restaurant. I wanted to, you know, again, make it so it was a small knit. So it's only 50 women in the room. Um, and then virtual can be unlimited, but I wanted them to be able to have that connection. They're also going to have an opportunity to do networking and connect with each other and tell everybody in the room what it is that they do, which is amazing opportunity that a lot of people miss out on. With that being said, you know, I had people that were like, oh no, you should do it here and you should do this. And you, 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 know, you get all of these different you know, things that people want to suggest, right? Everybody wants to give in their two cents. But I found that oftentimes if I do things that people suggest, it's not authentic. It's not me. And it doesn't work. Hey, listen, I'm willing to put in my 10,000 hours. I got to do it my way or else I'm setting myself up for failure. So literally, I got to push it to the limit my way or it's not gonna work it's, it's cute other people do stuff and they, i mean they're successful some not all are successful at what they're doing but i got some things that i'm putting together i got some things that i'm creating and as i build this legacy i'm literally looking around and there are women who are coming and standing beside me and standing with me arm in arm who are saying i got you sis whatever you need. Um, let, uh, this, this is how great it is. I can say this before leaving. This is how great it is, guys. So the Love My Voice tour kickoff is in Newark, Delaware. I'm in Maryland, not too far away. Um, it's in Newark, Delaware. Literally, women are coming in from New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York, and North Carolina. Wait. Let me repeat, women are coming in from New Jersey, Philadelphia, North Carolina, and New York. How amazing is that? That women are showing up and just to support, showing up to get that connection, showing up to literally find out what it is they need to do in order to have their voice heard. That's powerful. I can't, I'm, I'm going to be all types of amazing and all types of giggles and smiles next Saturday when I go live and share it out, guys, I will be all through the roof. I definitely will be through the roof, but I'm excited because when you have people that are willing to show up, um, it, it says a lot about your character. This is a lot about you. And so when I look at Dr. Maya Angelou and her life and the people that wanted to show up for her and the people that wanted to come and visit her and, and they brought her, she was at the White House with the Obamas for different things. I mean, she was, they were all over the place. And I, you know, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Ron Clark Academy. I don't know how you've missed the Ron Clark Academy at this point. They are yes, a school that is, is doing it by any means necessary. They are moving and shaking. But she actually came to one of the graduations 
um, for the Ron Clark Academy. And so, you know, when, when you're doing things and you're authentic about it, people want you in their space and they want to support you. They want to come and they want to invest in you. They want to stand by your side. They want to help you in whatever way possible. So I always say thank you, even to all of my viewers and replay viewers and listeners. Why? Because there would be no Speakeasy podcast without you. I applaud you. I appreciate you. There would be no Altavi Spelzer. Well, no, there would be an Altavi Spelzer, but there would not be the author, the speaker, the entrepreneur. There would be none of those good golly things. That's a good golly? Oh, that's horrible. There's, <laughs> there would be none of those things if there were no you. Every person that comes in and shares, every person that comes in and comments, every person that comes in and sends me a message and says, hey, I loved your broadcast today. Every person that sends me an email, a context that I'll be posing and says, oh my goodness, you know what? I keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. Don't keep moving. I see you're about to break through that, that ceiling. Keep going. Every single person that connects with me, I am so appreciative. And those who connect with me, they, they see it. They see it, and I hope that they feel it. <laughs> I hope that they feel it. I hope they feel all the warm and tingliness of it. But it's definitely, you know, I model it after Dr. Maya Angelou. I, you know, I don't want to be her per se, because I know my journey is different. But I would definitely love to be able to impact the world the same way she was able to do so. Travel and and teach and yeah that part so with that being said guys those who have come in today i appreciate you guys again if you haven't done so already subscribe or follow so that way you can get notification when i go live or when the next podcast is uploaded uh that being said if you are a speaker or an author and would love to be on the platform i'd love to have you bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast all lowercase in order for you to pick a time and day that works best for you as we move forward we are rebranding and so the speakeasy podcast will be moving to tuesdays and thursdays of every week um moving forward and so we got some amazing things going on with that I already told you guys some sponsors are coming in. So we got some, some changes will be made to the, to, to the podcast area. But with that being said, I definitely want you guys to continue to show up, continue to share it out and continue to let me know what you think. If you have a topic or an idea, let me know that too. Or somebody that you think I would want to interview. Oh, and, and the interviews that are about to come down the pipeline get ready. That's all I'm going to say. Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely um, went out all the way out of my comfort zone to invite the people that will be coming on uh, within the next few weeks and months. Um, all the way out my comfort. I mean, like way out my comfort zone. But guess what? It's because that is what I know that you guys need and want. So that way you can be the best you when it comes to being the author or the speaker. I am your host, Alta Vies Pelzer, the voice coach, not a voice coach, but the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, podcaster, and Amazon bestselling author. I'm also a coach to the Reactivate Me and Get Amplified communities, uh, both private communities. One is a mastermind group. One is an accountability group. Why? Because we got to learn to use our voice and get out there and, and get these dollars, get these dollars. I'm excited, right? That's, that's, that's necessary. We, we don't want to be a broke entrepreneur. <laughs> that being said, until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. Yeah. <laughs>